Welcome everyone. My name is Cynthia White. I'm the traditional healer with Aboriginal Services at the Center for Addictions and Mental Health. My Mohawk name is Gawner Nolo. I come from the Mohawk territory of Akuzasni, the land where the partridge drums near Cornwall, Ontario. My lineage is Onondaga and I am Snipe Clan. So these are our ceremonial grounds at Cam H. And what you'll see behind me is the sweat lodge, the purification lodge covered with a bright yellow tarp, it's vinyl. During the time of our ceremony, we exchanged this yellow tarp for a black canvas tarp. This is how we stage the sweat the day before and individuals are invited to and required to attend for teachings and to participate in the preparation of the lodge because we are all encouraged there's there's a spiritual law that you have to work for your life so as with anything the more you put in the more you will receive so as we prepare the grounds we smudge the entire grounds um, with medicine with sage and we lay down um, medicine at the perimeter to contain the sacred space to prevent anything that's negative that might be on the outside of this space from interfering with the creator's work that's happening on the inside we smudge all the elements, the stones that are going to be used, and we offer tobacco to them and words of thanksgiving to acknowledge the life that's going to be sacrificed for us, for the life of the people. We also lay tobacco inside that fire pit before we, we build the fire, put the wood down or put the stones down because we must acknowledge the supreme being, the owner of all life, the creator. And ask the creator to be present through this ceremony, to move through that fire, to move through the entire ceremony as the true leader of ceremony. The conductor of the lodge is just the facilitator, the helper. And then we offer words and, and thanksgiving to Mother Earth and invite Mother Earth and all of creation to be with us and place that tobacco in the center beside the tobacco offering to the creator. Then we offer tobacco to the spirit helpers of all the four directions and place that in their respective places. From that point, then we can build the fire. We would lay down a bed of wood, firewood, and then place the stones on top of that wood instead of on the cold ground. And then we'd fix our kindling and place it all around those stones. And then we would use what we're going to um, as tinder. In, in, in this instance, we would use red broadcloth. Red represents the life force. So we use red cloth as our tinder because here in the city of Toronto we are lacking for tinder. If we were in the country in the bush we would use dried moss and and um, grasses and dried tree limbs to help uh, as tinder to ignite the fire. We would also gather buckets of water uh, and we would pray over it with the same prayers, with the same direction, so that it's connected to that sacred fire, the kind of healing that we are asking for on that day of the ceremony. And it's the women's responsibility to pray over the water, because as women, we're the ones that hold the water in our womb for that new life. That's why the water is the responsibility of the woman. And then we have cloth offerings, in this instance, black and white, to represent the ancestors. Um, in acknowledgement of this North Door Lodge, the lead spirits are the Northern Lights, and in those Northern Lights travel the ancestors. The other lead spirit is the White Thunderbird, bringing that ice and snow in the wintertime, but they also restore balance to the mind, to the body, to the spirit, and to the emotions, the heart. And it's, we can, once we're inside that lodge, we can travel with those northern lights. That's what they do is they travel. There's no boundary of space and time. They can take us to the past. They can take us to the future. They can show us the present to give us the answers we're seeking, that we're crying for, for the healing that we need. It can be revealed. During the time of the preparations of the lodge, we create a cedar line that connects the doorway of that sweat lodge to the fire pit that represents the umbilical cord because this lodge represents the womb of our mother, Mother Earth, as our first mother. And so we also lay 
Cedar down on the floor on the inside of that lodge. Cedar also helps us by pulling sickness from the individuals inside. We then lay a mat on top of the cedar and cover that mat with a blanket. As we enter that lodge, everyone kneels on their hands and knees to kiss Mother Earth, to acknowledge that we're going inside. And we crawl around inside on our hands and knees, never standing, that would be a sign of disrespect. We humble ourselves as we find our seat inside. Once everyone is comfortable and, and situated, the grandfather stones that have been heated for at, at least a couple hours will be brought inside one by one. And we give greetings to each of those stones. Greetings, grandfather. Thank you. And in the different languages, we, we would also say that. So I would say in Mohawk, Sego, Yaki Sutta, Ganalunkwa, Yawankoa. We, I give you greetings, grandmothers and grandfathers. And I thank you, and I send you my love. And we would receive those, and they'd be placed on the inside pit. Once all the grandfathers are brought inside, we close the door, and a pipe ceremony is, is done inside. The first round, um, sacred medicine songs, spirit calling, calling songs are sung. After that pipe ceremony is finished, me a message is shared with the people inside, and the door will open. We will have a drink of medicine. During the time of those medicine songs, that water that has been prayed over will also be splashed, dropped on those hot stones to release the spirit and the messages and the medicine and the healing will take place after that. Each time the door opens and it will open three successive times after we first enter the lodge. The stones will be brought in, the door will close, prayers will be made, songs will be sung, the door will open, a message will be shared. Each time the door opens, an individual is free to exit the lodge and most welcome to remain at the fire, to continue praying while the ceremony continues inside the sweat lodge. There have been many occasions where individuals will wait outside and never go inside the lodge but they will sit outside and pray for their own healing. And they will also receive vision and messages and healing that is equal to everyone who is inside the sweat lodge. No one is left out of this ceremony. There's a place for all. At the end of the ceremony, we um, will exit and again kiss Mother Earth at the doorway and approach the sacred fire that's burning. Uh, and offer our tobacco um, to that sacred fire to give thanks to the Creator, to the Northern Lights, the White Thunderbirds, to our Mother the Earth, and the Spirit Helpers that brought us messages and vision and healing while we were inside. In addition to the cloth offerings that we make in respect of the ancestors, the black and white cloth, we also make offerings of food you, typically we would have large platters and for this demonstration purpose we just have these small plates and what you'll see is white corn and wild rice. In addition to that we would also put berries and fish and beans. We would incorporate those items and more if needed. And those food offerings are abundant to reflect the abundance that the Creator provides us each day. And this is our way of giving thanks and giving back for what we're asking for. Because it's not a small ask, we're asking for a miracle. And miracles happen every day. And we just have to be open to receiving that in our lives. We're all worthy and everyone can receive. We come from a place of peace and we are given a duty to perform. And we descend from the heavens and we're born to our mothers and fathers. And the journey begins on the earth. And things begin to happen to us as human beings. Pain, 
becomes a part of our lives and it seems to define us. The journey continues because we must reestablish our original relationship with the Creator, the one who made us. And in that development of the relationship, we learn about where we come from and who went on before us. And it's the ancestors that stand with us and hold our hands and teach us about those things we need to return to because they know what it is to carry the burdens in, of the heart and mind. And healing really is to give away that pain. And when that pain is released to the one who made us, we no longer have to carry it. We are no longer defined by that. And then the Creator can truly dress us in the image that He always intended. And it's born from a cry from the heart. And our ancestors tell us that if there is no love, there is no healing. So life really is about embracing that great medicine from the Creator, love. And if you cannot love, the world will never change. And so we must pass that on to those that are coming behind us. So that we may be restored to the original perfection the Creator had always intended us to be.